Friends, uh, welcome to lecture number 9 on uh, irrigation, and, uh, irrigation schedule uh, of uh, irrigation and drainage uh, lecture series. So, in this lecture, we are going to uh, learn the what is irrigation scheduling and, uh, uh, and what are the methods uh, involved in uh, deciding an irrigation and uh, how much water really required for a plant. And uh, finally, uh, we are going to see some of the examples. Okay. So, let us see uh, what is irrigation scheduling. So, irrigation scheduling, so the main objective is to maximize yield. So, that is the main objective. In addition to that, the irrigation effectiveness and efficiency okay, and then uh, crop quality uh, by applying the exact amount of water needed by the crop or replenish uh, I mean the soil moisture to the desired level. So, here if you are uh, talking about irrigation scheduling, our main objective is to uh, increase the yield at the same time uh, increase the irrigation efficiency okay, and also effectiveness. So, this uh, and finally, as, as a result we are going to expect the what uh, uh, plant quality or crop quality. Okay. So, here three questions we need to ask ourselves. Okay. So, the three questions are like this in irrigation scheduling. So, when to give irrigation, okay, then how much to give irrigation okay, and how to give irrigation. So, these three uh, questions we need to ask ourselves before deciding an irrigation event. Okay. So, uh, then next is irrigation scheduling uh, to meet the goals. So, there are several goals. Suppose you, you have like land is limiting condition in your case. So, you have a limited land situations. In that case, the main objective of irrigation scheduling is so the maximize the yield per unit area because your area is limited. So, uh, whereas your water is limiting condition. So, you have limited water resources. So, in that case you, your objective is to maximize the yield per unit water applied. Okay. So, and other case, so you have abundant water and land condition. Okay. You have lot of water and you have lot of land available. So, land and water is not a limiting condition. So, in that case your uh, irrigation scheduling objective is to maximize yield per unit energy. So, that means energy uh, related to your farming operation and uh, the uh, I mean irrigation equipment uh, operation of irrigation equipment and other things. So, then so the main thing is maximizing the net profit. So, uh, this is important for farming uh, enterprises and not popular for day to day scheduling. So, the maximizing net net profit is uh, important for farming enterprise. Okay, so finally, so, but generally, what happens in net for uh, net popular? Uh, it's not popular for day-to-day -day scheduling. So main day-to-day -day scheduling, you are looking for whether water is given or not, or uh, or uh, I mean required quantity of water is given or not. So that is important. Then the the profits. So the, the next thing is your okay. So then irrigation scheduling, suppose you want to irrigate uh, uh, the crop is required around 8 mm per day. Okay. So, that means, so the whole field if you think, uh, look at this field. So, the whole field require 8 mm of uh, water uniformly and all over the field. So, this is our objective. Okay. So, then so, how, how do we give this 8 mm? Suppose, uh, daily the evaporation required by the crop is 8 mm per day. Okay. So, 8 mm. So, that means, so the crop requires 8 mm of 8 mm depth of water uh, to consume right from the soil surface. So, for that you have to replenish that 8 mm every day. So, you, you can give you know water 8 mm of water every day or what you can do. So, you, you can uh, you know every like 24 mm every 3 days or 40 mm every 5 days. 
right. So, it like 24 mm in the sense. So, 8 mm multiplied by 3 days. So, that is uh, 24 mm uh, like that 8 mm multiplied by 5 days you get 40 mm. So, you can give the daily amount you know uh, into different time intervals. So, by accumulating the daily amount to particular you know, time interval and then you can give the irrigation. So, in principle the irrigation amount is one application is the amount of water used by plants since the previous irrigation. So, in, in the previous day for example, the uh, suppose you are uh, making 3 days every 3 days right you are giving irrigation every 3 days. So, the first day uh, like let us say 0th day you gave 24 mm ok. So, in the third day so, third day you gave again 24 mm. So, the th th third day whatever amount you are giving. So, that is that is accumulated by previous 3 days ok. So, that is the water used by plants since the previous irrigation ok. So, the next is uh, proper irrigation scheduling uh, minimizes the. So, proper irrigation scheduling minimizes the following. So, the first is if you are giving you know water uh, properly right uh, then yield is uh, not going to reduce because minimizing right. You are, so, minimizing the yield reduction and minimizing the wastage of water right or energy ok. So, because you are not giving excess water. So, you can minimize the wastage of water and also irrigation cost because you pump lot of water and operating pump cost you know uh, operation of pump cost ok. So, the excess ground water withdrawal right. So, since you are giving adequate you know water to the plant you need not withdraw you know lot of water from the uh, ground and the pollution of uh, surface and ground water by agrochemicals. So, agrochemicals uh, are the uh, like fertilizer and pesticides which are we are applying for uh, you know plant growth as well as plant protection. So, those chemicals uh, uh, the residue of those chemicals are uh, lying on the surface or within the soil. So, the moment you apply a lot of water. So, what happened? So, the all chemicals are going to leach down and uh, uh, leads to ground water pollution. So, since you are applying you know limited water to the uh, ground uh, I mean the leachate uh, amount will be less and uh, you can reduce the pollution of surface as well as ground water by agrochemicals. And then the drainage requirement. So, the drainage requirement can be minimized in this case and water logging and salinity hazard can be minimized and environmental and health hazard can be minimized. So, all are leading to you know you are giving adequate water and uh, you know exactly what plant is required or maybe less. So, that leads to uh, uh, really uh, lowering the agrochemicals uh, you know passage or leaching into the ground water as well as surface water and uh, that that leads to the environmental you know uh, health ok uh, and the disease free environment. So, less uh, environmental pollution. So, then next is so what are the indicators of uh, irrigation need? So, when you go to the field and observe the crop. So, how do you know that whether the crop is required in irrigation or not? So, there are some indicators. So, based on that you can really identify. So, whether the crop or uh, particular crop is required irrigation at that point of time or not. So, here some of the indicators are like plant leaf appearance right. If you look at the plant sometimes plant leaves ok. So, the uh, leaves are going to be curly right curly nature or uh, like here in the picture if you see. So, they are going to like a build like, like uh, the leaf fall right you sometimes you see uh, the dead leaves ok. So, that means the plant real requires water at that point of time and uh, other one is the soil moisture status. So, this uh, how do we uh, know that in the field? So, the expert uh, people what they do they they take soil from the hand you know and then uh, uh, once they press the soil 
you know in, 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 the, in the fold then they see whether the uh, based on their experience they can identify whether the uh, soil has enough water or not. Okay. So, then the other one is the soil water potential. So, this is used by uh, I mean the, our previous lectures uh, we discussed on uh, soil water potential using tensiometers. So, installing tensiometers in the field uh, can give you an indication that uh, how much the water stress is attained. Okay. So, then uh, leaf water potential. So, this is similar to you know soil water potential. So, leaf water potential. So, uh, this will tell how much water really present within the uh, you know plant surface and uh, not plant surface within the plant. And the other one is the leaf temperature. So, here uh, this is an another indicator leaf temperature. So, too much temperature is not good. Uh, that means, the uh, the pores like like the stomata are uh, closing down and that is really uh, causing you know a lot of heat generated inside the uh, temperature and that is an indicator that uh, the plant is starving uh, I mean the thirsty. So, it needs water and then so next is irrigation scheduling methods. So, what are the methods we generally use for scheduling an irrigation? So, here if you see there are number of methods available right and we are going to discuss some of these methods. So, the first one is climate approach or ET based. Okay. So, the mostly we used the ET based approach to decide the daily water consumption and uh, next is the pan evaporometer right using a uh, pan evaporation. So, this is very easy method. So, any uh, farmer can install you know pan evaporometer in their field and see the evaporation from the uh, pan and then from there you, you can find out the crop evapotranspiration uh, using the dis, uh, I mean the, uh, the theory we discussed earlier. And the soil moisture base, so this is uh, uh, based on how much moisture present in the soil and we have we can take the soil sample from the ground and see the moisture present in the uh, soil using gravimetric analysis. And deficit irrigation concept, suppose uh, uh, this is also we discussed earlier. So, uh, the field capacity is the upper limit and wilting point is the lower limit. So, if you decide like you know the available water is field capacity minus wilting point that is available water. So, if that is you know uh, based on your percentage, my interest is if that reserve uh, depletes 50 percent, then I give irrigation. Okay. So, if that reserves uh, depletes you know up to 70 percent, then I give irrigation. So, this kind of uh, uh, you know approach can be used in deficit irrigation concept and then soil water potential. So, so this is soil water potential using tensiometers again. So, leaf water potential. So, uh, again uh, so there are some instruments directly you can measure. So, stress day index so, how much uh, I mean on the particular day what is the stress level and irrigation calendar. So, this is also easy method. So, you have to track the moisture level uh, I mean daily. So, by using you know uh, kind of a calendar or a book. So, like this is another thing check book or soil moisture balance approach. So, and models there are irrigation models available uh, you can use to decide when to give irrigation how much to give irrigation. Then, then there are real time uh, schedule irrigation scheduling. So, the real time irrigation schedulings are uh, I mean now, now they are very popular uh, in uh, modeling as well as you know growing crop. So, uh, so this approach connects both real time weather data and then uh, the soil moisture and using the software uh, approach I mean their software available to connect these two and finally, decide how much uh, soil moisture is present in the ground and uh, that triggers the irrigation based on the your uh, uh, you know deficit level a given de predefined deficit level. So, then uh, it, it on the pump automatically and gives the irrigation. Okay. And then 
So, here uh, for example, uh, climate approach in climate approach. So, E t is calculated based on the historical weather data for crop period in an advance. So, though, so this requires basically a lot of weather data, I mean historical weather data and based on that uh, you will be estimating. So, uh, what is the E t requirement for that particular crop for every month, uh, monthly right. So, then irrigation is applied when the e, when uh, with equal to E t amount or fraction multiplied by uh, multiples of E t. Suppose, you have the whole season you have this is the E t right, right for this particular crop. So, the whole cumulative E t will be fractionated or divided into different fractions. Okay. So, then you can give irrigation different uh, irrigations. Okay. Suppose, you have uh, you want to irrigate uh, like 100 mm right whole season. So, the 100 mm, so then you give irrigation at every 20 mm. So, total 5 irrigations you are going to give. Okay. So, then, so this uh, uh, fish back and uh, somer held a. So, what they found the amount of water equivalent to 0.5 of the peak E t rate gave the highest yield. So, they uh, done lot of uh, field experiments and what they found is. So, if you have a peak E t, E t rate and 50 percentage of that if you you know uh, uh, give irrigation. So, that really increases the I mean highest yield. So, increase the yield. So, in this method what have a number of weather parameters are needed to determine E t value and this we have already uh, come across in the previous lecture how to find out E t using weather data. And then uh, data may be difficult to obtain costly sometimes uh, existence of uh, and also uncertainty. So, it all depends on who has collected the data whether it is reliable or not. Okay. So, this method has some limitations. So, otherwise uh, this is straightforward method once you know the E t you can uh, give irrigation based on E t. Uh, that uh, I mean you have to decide suppose you do you do uh, uh, sprinkler irrigation. So, it is not a matter. So, every day you on the pump and sprinklers run and uh, uh, and based on the uh, available uh, uh, based on the ET requirement. So, the next is uh, pan evaporation. So, this is another method we just discussed. So, uh, the simply there is a pan uh, evaporometer. So, this is a class A pan. So, install it in the field. So, then what happened? Op this is open pan anyway. So, every day you will be knowing uh, the uh, decrease in water level. So, that gives the evaporation from the, uh, from the pan, and if you can multiply with pan coefficient, so that will give um, uh, uh, that will give what? That will give pan evaporation, okay. uh, that there will be lake evaporation, of course. So, pan evaporation multiplied by pan coefficient will give lake evaporation. So, so then uh, the irrigation is applied simply equal to the cumulative pan evaporation. So, you have 10 days of data, right? you have for example, 10 days of data. So, every day you get the evaporation right, from the pan. So, then you have to accumulate that, I mean accumulate of that for 10 days. So, that is called CPE, the cumulative pan evaporation at several days of interval. So, for example, 3, 5, 7, 10 or 15 days you got right. So, you got readings at this point and, and, and this is the C 15 days of suppose you have 15 days of uh, evaporation uh, then accumulate it then, then uh, uh, you decide intervals 3, 5, 7, 10 or 15 days. So, based on that you can give irrigation. Okay. So, the whole thing as, as, I, as I said initially, so the whole E t the cumulative E t can be demarcated or distributed in e, like uh, based on the, the times. Okay. So, then you can give irrigation and, and irrigation is also applied according to the predetermined ratio applied to irrigation to C p. So, you can also decide uh, you know the uh, ratio. So, for example, for example, 0.5 is my ratio. Right. So, my irrigation irrigation will be, uh, will be given 50 percentage of this uh, C p e. Okay. 
the 50 percent of my CPV. So, that is so irrigation water which is equal to so 0.5 this is my predefined fraction of CP the cumulative fan evaporation. So, this way you can give the irrigation. Okay. Suppose, you have like 10 days CP and uh, uh, 0.5 is my fraction. So, 50 percent is of that. So, we will see when this 50 percent is going to evaporate. Okay. So, then I give irrigations. I, I replenish that amount. Okay. So, this concept is simple farmer friendly and need no technical hand and no sophisticated instrument. So, you, you only need one pan in the uh, field and find out uh, you know uh, the evaporation, pan evaporation it is very simple. And then next is, so for example, here uh, based on the pan data. So, you have the pan evaporation data recorded at a certain location over a period of one week. Okay. So, for one week every day so, 4 mm, second day 4.3 mm like that up to uh, 7 days. So, if irrigation scheduling based on ratio of irrigation water IW to cumulative pan evaporation CPE is practiced, the depth of irrigation at an interval of a week for IW by CPE is equal to 0.9 is. So, you have to find out if my fraction is 0.9. So, what is the depth of irrigation? Okay. So, this is very simple. So, previously you have seen. So, what you have to do? You have to find out what is cumulative pan evaporation by summing up all uh, daily evaporation. So, that you get CPE you got. So, then irrigation. So, I w by CPE is equal to the fraction is decided 0.9. So, then you can find out I w as 0 0.9 into 34.31 and 30.88 mm is the irrigation water. So, so irrigation water uh, I mean how much you have to give uh, irrigation water 30.88 that is your predefined uh, uh, fraction based on predefined fraction. Then okay, so the next is irrigation scheduling methods uh, uh, the C the stress day index. Okay. So, in the stress day index, so it is called S represented with S D I. So, this is the multiplication of S D I into C S. So, S so S D is the stress day factor and C S is the crop susceptibility factor. Okay. So, uh, S D is the stress day factor, crop susceptibility factor. So, this is the measure of degree and the duration of a plant water deficit. So, this is the measure of degree and duration of plant water deficit. So, how long the deficit has been happened right from the uh, suppose you have evaporation daily evaporation and this is your peak evaporation or, or, or you, you can say like uh, you have potential evaporation. So, this is the maximum evapotranspiration is happening right and this is you know some evapotranspiration. So, this fraction will give the stress day. Okay, this is this will give the stress day. So, then uh, crop susceptibility factor indicates the plant susceptibility to a given water deficit and depends on the species and stage of growth and given crop. So, indicates the plant susceptibility to a given water deficit okay. and this is also estimated I am going to tell you that later. So, uh, n is the number of growth uh, period considered. So, you see here the stress day factor is estimated using the E is the transpiration rate and E D is the potential evaporation. Okay. So, then the crop susceptibility factor C S is the plot. So, you have a plot between you know so, uh, so S D on ordinate and yield on of system. So, knowing the S D okay, so uh, you have like a crop yield on obsessa and cumulative ST given growth period. So, S D by yield suppose you have uh, uh, like a graph uh, like this and the slope will give that is a C S which is S D by yield. So, that will give the susceptibility factor. Okay. 
So, the next is the soil moisture balance checkbook method. So, in this, so the name indicates the checkbook method. So, mostly we use the soil water balance based on you knowing the initial soil moisture and then later you are going to check the uh, soil, soil moisture status based on the available uh, yeah, based on the previous days moisture content. Okay, so, in this, so this is the in initial information you need to provide this and the next is the days after emergence. So, days after first day, second day, third day. So, date and uh, total water within the root zone and crop water use, rainfall if you have rainfall, irrigation these are the inputs and this is output right and then the resultant moisture content. So, that is so 3 the total water within the root zone this is the 3 this is the reservoir right this is the reservoir from reservoir minus 4 I mean crop has utilized this much and then but there is some uh, additional input like rainfall and uh, irrigation and finally, so based on this uh, uh, balance uh, you get the current days uh, soil moisture. So, this is a checkbook method ok. So, and there is another method called bookkeeping method. So, the bookkeeping method this similar to that uh, similar to the uh, checkbook method. So, moisture status of the soil is calculated by estimating the values of evapotranspiration. So, there uh, so evapotranspiration come into the picture uh, in this and uh, crop is irrigated when estimated soil moisture attains a predetermined value. So, and you are going to decide irrigate based on the, um, the soil moisture which attains the predefined value ok. So, example here a crop has 200 mm of available water in the root zone. So, this is the total available soil water reservoir right, reserve. So, at the field capacity and it has to be irrigated at the deficit of 100 mm. So, you have 200 mm and, and irrigate when it is reduced to 100 mm. So, for example, here date here the first column is date age of crop is given 20, 21 days, 22 days. Okay. So, estimate E t mm per day. So, this is uh, E t is estimated daily and accumulated deficit. So, this is 4 mm. So, based on that right accumulated deficit and uh, 10 mm 17 mm. So, this adding these two will give this and this add these two you get this add these two you get this. So, like that you keep on adding 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 then so it is given it is coming to 100 mm then you give irrigation ok. So, deficit 100 mm the total reservoir is 200 mm right 200 mm. So, uh, look at this here from day 1 you accumulate it and see when it is coming to 100 mm and give irrigation. So, and if the average value of E t are considered ok average value uh, the estimated irrigation interval. So, irrigation interval is estimated using this equation. So, so this is field capacity soil moisture initial soil moisture and this is uh, uh, this is called the root zone depth and E t evapotranspiration. So, that will give the irrigation interval. So, this will give the res reserve right total reserve or available uh, water at that point of time and this this the total will give the available moisture and then E t E t will be like m mm m per day you give. So, this will give m mm. m. So, m mm m by m mm m per day you will give number of days of irrigation ok. And uh, this method is uh, similar to the uh, popular you know I w by C p e we have seen the uh, the example. So, suppose here I w is fixed irrigation water is fixed say 6 centimeter I want to give 6 centimeter right. So, this, this that means E t E t is fixed and I w by C p e ratio also fixed and you can estimate the C p e that is 7.5. So, irrigation when C p e is 7.5 centimeter ok. So, this way you can give irrigation. Okay. So, irrigation scheduling there are methods uh, modeling approach as I said there is a modeling approach uh, there is F A O crop VAT. So, this can be used to uh, estimate irrigate I mean schedule an irrigation event right and uh, there is a Coros uh, sorry Croso VAT that is Joshi et al 1995 
This is a numerical model. This is estimating irrigation water requirement in humid basins under various management options. And there is uh, uh, another, another famous uh, model called IRI, uh, the ORISA 2000, which is developed at uh, IRI. So, this uh, irrigation management in rice crop mostly, uh, this is used for rice crop. Okay, so, and then uh, there is, um, okay, so real time irrigation scheduling, if you see this, as I mentioned before, the real time irrigation scheduling has weather data, right? It takes weather data from here and uh, from data loggers, soil information, that soil moisture status. Okay, so, based on that, there is an algorithm in the software. So, that decide based, it takes the uh, weather data, it takes the soil data, the current and based on that, it will give the uh, present soil moisture condition and then uh, based on the irrigation criteria, it uh, triggers the pump. Okay, so, then give irrigation. So, this kind of, here the, this shows uh, the overall view of the same thing what we are talking. So, this everything you get weather data from here uh, and then uh, the whole weather data and then triggers the pump and then uh, uh, this is the sprinkler uh, you know mover. So, it is going to irrigate the entire field. So, uh, then scheduling strategies are basically two. So, either you give uh, entire irrigation, so that means filling up to the field capacity and also the maximum. Uh, so, uh, here the full, full you give full irrigation. So, full irrigation is entire irrigation you give, uh, it maximizes the production, whereas the deficit irrigation. So, deficit irrigation we talked about earlier also. So, allowing planned water stress. So, this is under stress, I mean uh, the plant will be under uh, stress and partially supply the irrigation requirement. And uh, when irrigation system limits water availability, adequate water during critical stages. Okay. So, these things uh, is straightforward, we discussed already. And then, uh, so the next is uh, when to irrigate. So, general approaches here. So, just we are going to review some of the things. So, as I mentioned, when to give irrigation, the plant indicators, soil indicators and water budgeting technique. Okay. So, this we discuss and more or less we also discuss the water budgeting using checkbook method and other things. So, the plant indicators are appearance and uh, growth, uh, leaf temperature and leaf water potential. So, these three uh, we can think of. And then uh, next is soil indicators or like determining the current water content of the soil. So, appearance and feel. So, you take the soil and uh, uh, I mean just low fit and see whether uh, uh, based, uh, you can feel it based on your uh, experience you can see that uh, what is the percentage of moisture content and gramatic sampling, tensiometers, porous blocks, Newton scattering technique can also be used to measure the soil moisture. And comparing it to the uh, predetermined minimum water content such as theta c uh, and irrigate to maintain soil water content above the minimum level. So, this uh, I mean you can compare with uh, the minimum soil moisture uh, required I mean your your uh, what is threshold. So, when it is crossing the threshold limit then you irrigate it to, uh, to the field capacity. Okay, so, the other one here uh, this we already uh, discussed. So, then so next is water budget technique if you see it is similar to soil water uh, soil indicator methods. So, this equation is important. So, the current soil moisture content is equal the previous day moisture content E t minus P e. So, P e is the effective this input means extra water you are getting from, from this uh, atmosphere and E t this is the loss. So, this much is already applied and you want to find out what, what is and divided by the root zone depth will give the current day moisture content. Okay. And this table shows the different 
uh, methods of irrigation scheduling okay and here there is a hand feel and appearance method gravimetric method tensiometers you know electrical resistance and water budgeting approach and modified uh, atmometer so here uh, the measured parameters are given and equipment needed are given and irrigation criteria what kind of criteria you give for example hand fill method soil moisture content okay so mostly soil moisture content advantages are given here and disadvantages are given so you go through this slide to understand the uh, advantage disadvantages and equipment needed for a particular uh, irrigation scheduling method okay and yeah yeah thanks uh, this is the end of this uh, lecture and then so in this lecture what we focused is what is an irrigation uh, scheduling so it, it we have to answer three questions for this so the first one is when to give irrigation how much to give irrigation and uh, how to give an irrigation so we just discussed uh, when to give irrigation and how much to give irrigation uh, and then how to give irrigation we are going to discuss later okay and we discuss the the methods of irrigation scheduling okay and some examples right so out of this the easy method in the field is evapo uh, and pan evapo meter method okay pan evaporation method yeah thank you